What up, YouTube? It's your boy, Big Cool, coming to you from Colossal Boxing Talk. And I'm back here to discuss some of the latest news and topics regarding the sport of boxing. First up, we have Tony Bellew challenging Andre Ward. And obviously, he got he caught wind of Andre Ward's post-fight interview after his 8th round TKO victory over Sergey Kovalev in their highly anticipated rematch this past weekend. And in that interview, Max Kellerman of HBO asked, What's next for Andre Ward? Andre Ward replied, maybe cruiserweight, maybe heavyweight. Who knows? You know, he sets the, the standard high. And for anybody who is familiar with Andre Ward, this shouldn't be of no surprise because a few years ago, he's mentioned this as one of his goals is to win a title at cruiserweight and potentially heavyweight. But it had to be the right circumstance against a guy who um, he feels he could compete with, you know. So there's a few guys. And Tony Bellew isn't that guy um, that would do it for him because, for one, he's no longer the WBC Cruiserweight champion. But this will be a good first fight for Andre Ward if he indeed wanted to go up and, you know, like he said, and really be true and go up and fight at Cruiserweight. He could get acclimated. And Tony Bellew is a good enough fighter with a big enough name and a good, good enough following um, from over there in the U.K., uh, to, you know, get the interest and the intrigue of the fight fans into this fight because, like I said, he's a former WBC Cruiserweight champion. He defeated um, BJ Flores. He's fought um, Adonis Stevenson, Nathan Cleverly at light heavyweight. He's coming off his biggest and best career win against David Hay um, this past March where he stopped him in the 11th round, although David Hay tore his Achilles Still, you know, he got the KO victory, and that's another notch under his belt. And although Bellu respects the hell out of Andre Ward, they were co-stars on um, in the movie Creed, and funny enough, they were supposed to fight um, in the movie, but Tony Bellu hit it, but Ward and caused them to, I think it was a cut or it was a broken, it was something, but the fight didn't happen. But this is real life, and this is a very good fight, you know. Like I said, Ward could get adjusted to... You know, the bigger um, weights, having all that muscle mass and all that extra weight on him, you know, get accustomed to that, acclimate it, and then he can go on to bigger and better things. I don't know um, if this fight was to take place, which network, because, you know, uh, Andre Ward is done with uh, HBO. Not saying he can't re-sign, but, you know, he, he, he fought his deal. He did what he had to do. He stayed true to his um, part of, you know, Fighting through, fighting out his deal, and you know now he's a free agent. He can go to Showtime. He could resign with HBO, or he can just be a free agent where whatever fights present itself, he could fight on either network. So it'll be very interesting to see. Um, and you have to look at Tony Bellow. He's like six three, six four. He's a big guy. He's twenty nine and two with nineteen knockouts. So his power is solid, um, as shown in his fight with David Hay. As well as his, um, you know, his wins at cruiserweight, so he poses some threat to Andre Ward, but not much in my opinion. I think Ward wins that fight rather easily. Although I like the confidence and swagger of Tony Bellu, who believes that, you know, he's well adjusted to the higher weights and that he won't he wouldn't struggle at all with Andre Ward. Um, skill wise, it's just levels to it, and these guys are at least two to three levels. Um, apart so i think that while it'll be a good good fight and that bellu would you know make andre you know earn it in the early rounds i think that war will win this fight going away and i wouldn't rule out a stop it so i would like to see that fight happen if it can and that's only if we can't get a stevenson or unification belt uh to determine the face of the light heavyweight division officially although we know that guy is andre sog ward Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Tyson Fury is in prime shit talking mode. But the problem with that is all he does is talk shit. Continue to jab and throw shots at Anthony Joshua, who is continuing to win and gain fans, make more money, stay relevant for what he's supposed to be doing, and that's fighting. It seems that Tyson Fury is jealous because Anthony Joshua told the truth. He won a boring unanimous 12-round decision over former champion Vladimir Klitschko. And that's not knocking um, Tyson Fury. Not at all. You win how you win. The objective is to win. It's not 
Anthony Joshua's fault that his style meshed better with Vladimir than yours, or that Vladimir had more left in the tank than we all, you know, we all thought. But it's not your fault either that your six nine um, is very uh, unorthodox, very uncomfortable fighting style for your opponents, and that you, you know, have tremendous reach and you're a, a very good fighter. So it's neither one of y'all's fight. The the fight played out the way it did. It was just styles not meshing well, but. Let's look at what Tyson Fury responded to Anthony Joshua, who said his fight was born. And this is what Tyson Fury had to say. Born, hey? We see who was born when you face me. A big bully is what you are, you big doser. Big Femi, you bully, street name. I've seen your type many times. The man who can't speak his own mind, the plastic Nigerian. I'm more Nigerian than you. I'll fly the flag for, the, for Nigeria when we fight. Gypsy man represents the world. Ali had words for you, for a man like you. They were Uncle Tom. So, obviously, he's throwing some heat at Anthony Joshua. He's calling him Uncle Tom, which I do not think Anthony Joshua is. He called him a big Femi. I don't know if he's saying he's feminine or that's a nickname or some shit that um, Joshua had growing up. Because he mentioned, you know, we all know he sold some, some marijuana and some shit, you know, before he turned his life around, which is not a big deal. But I'm going to just assume when he say Femi that he called him feminine. And whether that's the case or not is nobody else's business. Tyson Fury uh, is coming off as a hater. He's doing more talking than he actually doing training, trying to get his himself into physical condition to be ready to fight these guys. He's talking shit too. Because the last time we seen Tyson Fury was two years ago, 2015, November 2015, where he did become the guy that Anthony Joshua is now. Although he was, what, 26 then, he's not that much older, he's 28, Joshua's 27, still, he's been out of the ring, he had his cocaine issue, he still may have cocaine issue, prescription drug issue, whatever you want to call it, it's an issue, and he seems to be lashing out at a guy who he's jealous of, envious of, because he wants to have that position that he did have for a brief second before he squandered that opportunity, he didn't want to fight Klitschko in a rematch, because Yes, he was battling some demons, some drug addictions, you name it. He was he was going through it. So we hope that he's okay. He's fit not only to be a fighter, but fit to be a father, a husband to his wife and kids, a brother, a son to his family who love him, first and foremost. Now, he keeps saying that he's going to return. He's going to return. He's been in the gym. He's just waiting on his um, board meeting with the British board to determine when and if he will get his license back. In, t in the meantime, I guess we can expect to continue to hear um, Tyson Fury take shots at Anthony Joshua. I just think he's jealous. He feels that, you know, Joshua is a fraud. Um, he's not his own man. He doesn't think for himself. He doesn't speak for himself. And he just doesn't like him. And Joshua obviously doesn't like him, but he's not investing um, and putting too much time and emotions into Tyson Fury. When the fight is actually... Um, right there to present itself. I'm pretty sure Anthony Joshua will sign on the dotted line. Hopefully Tyson Fury not only signs on the dotted line, but doesn't come up with a, a fluke-ass injury along the way because he did that two or three times before he finally got in the ring with Vladimir. He did it before the rematch with Vladimir and before just pulling out all together. So, it seems that one guy is serious about their career and becoming an all-time great, and the other is wanting to be an all-time great talk shit talker. And eventually, you're going to have to get back in the ring, Tyson, and put up or shut up. But in, in the meantime, we're not going to worry about you. We're going to worry about the, the IBF and WBA heavyweight champion, Anthony Joshua, who um, has a fight coming up either against Vladimir Klitschko in a rematch or against um, Pulev. So, that being said, I'm on Anthony Joshua's side in this case, like, you know, the fight was born, but there's no need to really get up in your feelings about something that's the truth. And he did get knocked out. Almost, he did get knocked down, almost get knocked out by Vladimir. He's not mad about that. He's going to get better for it. Uh, Tyson, just, you know, train, get yourself healthy, get back in the ring so we can see this fight. Peace. WBO middleweight champion Billy Ho Sanders could actually be in a real fight real soon. He took to Twitter yesterday morning. And, t and taunted David Lemieux, the former IBF middleweight champion, by stating or tweeting,
cunt boy. You are next in line, so let's go. Hearing that shit had to piss David Lemieux off because he responded like he was. He said, I can't wait to make you bleed and take that belt away from you. I'm going to destroy you. See you soon, pussy. And I hope this fight happens. I hope this fight happens. I'm going to be honest. I do not like Billy Ho Saunders. He's been holding that WBO middleweight title hostage since he won it from Andy Lee. He hasn't fought anybody other than Chris Eubank Jr. and Andy Lee. He hasn't fought anybody since then. He was supposed to fight Cursicide um, in July, but Cursicide got caught up on some major RICO charges, and that fight is not going to happen. And when we heard this, like, oh, damn, damn, another bum he's going to fight or another guy that's not on his level he's going to fight. And don't get me wrong, Billy Ho has some good skills. He's a good fighter. Um, he poses some threats to whoever he faces in the middleweight division because he has a good skill set. But let's be real. Him holding that title hostage, thanks to Frank Warren maneuvering his way out of challenges, you know, saying he's going to fight Golovkin, you know, turning down fights against Gabe Rosado in uh, Willie Monroe is BS. It's crazy. Um, but that's something Billy Ho Saunders did. But now he can't really run from this challenge of David Lemieux because David Lemieux is, I think, now the number one guy in the WBO rankings. And he's eager to become a champion again. And we know what type of dynamite power Lemieux possesses in his fist. But he didn't look good in his last fight. Um, I have to say that he didn't look good on the undercard of Canelo Alvarez and Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. Uh, he won a decision and a fight he probably should have got a stoppage in. And, you know, he didn't. And he also kind of has some stamina issues. He's been dropped and stopped before he's fought. Um, and Dom, Golovkin, um, he, Marco Tan Antonio Rubio. He's fought with some, some good guys. Gabe Rosado, Curtis Stevens, who he erased. The fight before last with a left hook, almost killing Stevens, in my opinion. Um, but, like I said, this is a good fight. And both of these guys are pretty evenly matched. One guy is more finesse, could box, could, can, can box and move. The other guy is straight, brunt, strength, and power. And I think they style with mesh very, very well. Um, and it is a fight that's needed to happen. This fight uh, could be either on the undercard of... Canelo Golovkin or on the same day in the UK um, where David Hay could travel and I'm not saying this fight is likely to happen but the way these guys are speaking the fight could play out the way I'm thinking it happened September 16th either on the undercard of Alvarez Golovkin or in the UK and England of England and you know settle it that way all we do know is that these guys <laughs> don't like each other um, Billy Osuna just started to ton of them, and David Lemieux has responded, and that these guys will be in line to face the winner of Alvarez Golovkin um, in their next fight. Although Lemieux did face Golovkin already and was stopped in the eighth round, he will he will love nothing more than to get re revenge on Golovkin. So. I don't know if this fight is going to come off because I don't trust Billy Ho when it comes to actually signing the dotted line to actually face somebody who's on his level or above. I know David Lemieux will fight him. He's fought, you know, a lot of guys, man, like I just mentioned. So hopefully this fight comes to fruition and it gets announced sometime soon because Billy Ho has to stop holding that WBO middleweight title hostage and fight a live body and get the fans, his fans, um, what they want to see him versus somebody competitive. Um, so, that's my thoughts on this. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to Colossal Boxing Talk. Drop those comments in the comment section below. Give me your thoughts on everything I covered in this video. Don't forget to turn those notifications on to get notified every time we upload content. Follow us on Twitter at ColossalCBT. Head over to Facebook. Smack that like button on the Colossal Boxing Talk Facebook page. Until next time, I'm out. Peace.